is uh, Scott Bradshaw he's been with us over the years doing all sorts of things and now he comes to us with a whole new idea yeah the full moon festival yeah um where did the idea come from where well, did the idea come from? <laughs> I'm a big fan of Dark Horse yeah. and before Dark Horse announced that they weren't going to carry on mm. I started work on this because there's room for two uh, unfortunately Dark Horse have, have cancelled this year they are looking for a venue for next year um, ah, just something for the Manx people to do. Okay, well, you've had a challenge, let's say, put it this way, to get this thing organised. There's a lot of hoops to go through, isn't there, to, to, to get permissions yeah. and things like that. Yeah, you know, we, we went through licensing on December the 8th, so I'm quite an organised guy. And then at the last ESAG meeting, which is Event Safety Advisory Guide, we, we got a little nod off somebody and said, look, you might, you might need to get planning permission for people to sleep. Huh? So, yeah, um, two hours later, I was at the planning office. Um, ten weeks later, we were in planning court. And thankfully, on Monday, it all went through. And then Wednesday, we got our final license because we had to amend the license slightly. And now I've got five, left, five weeks left to rescue it, shall five we say? Weeks. Yeah. Um, we sold a lot of tickets in the first few months, luckily. Okay. And then when the... When the announcement came out that we had to get planning permission, it was sort of insinuated that we didn't have any planning permission at all, which isn't true because you can run a festival under the Town and Country Planning Act. So yeah, um, tickets went very slow while people thought we had no planning and luckily the last week or so they've, they've fired up again. And we're just at 492, I think it is this morning. So I set a target of about a thousand um, the venue's 25 acres, it's beautiful. Um, we could take more, but for this one, realistically, if, if we get seven, eight hundred, it will be plenty. So, with such limited time, how do you get yourself all the, the acts together, that sort of thing? Well, I've been working on the acts since August. Um, up until today, I've had 118 meetings now. So, it's been pretty much a full-time job for nearly a year. Uh, I'm hoping that next year it'll be quite a bit easier now. So you, you are going to make this a regular? Yeah, I'm hoping so. Yeah, I, I have a vision. Um, I see hopefully by year three something like a mini Isle of Wight festival with some you know, really big headline acts. Obviously this year we've got Bushwhacker. He's mm. huge yeah. in the DJ world. Um, he was number one on Beatport two or three weeks ago, which you might know as Top of the Pops. <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> He's a huge star, you know, he, he's, and, and we're very lucky to have him. The only reason we've got him is he, I, I sort of know him from mm -hmm. Ibiza. So, and he's never been to the island before, but we've got a lot of the good local bands, you know, the, the Voodoo Bandits, for me, they're, if there's one local band going to make it, it's them. Yeah. And obviously, there are some, no, don't get me wrong, there's other local bands that yeah. could make it, but them guys put so much effort in, they make all their own videos. So we've got them playing twice because there is going to be some Saturday day tickets. So because they're headlining the Friday, I've put them on on the Saturday as well so the people who come on the Saturday can see them. Because you've got five music areas? Yep. And one, well, it was three. Mm. Then we went to four. And then I put a lot of effort into an Arts Council proposal and we got accepted. So we've organised a fifth tent, which is great because it's called Isle of Man Introducing. And it's going to be run by Soundcheck. And it's for all of the young, well, the younger people in the daytime who don't get the chance to play at events like this. Mm -hmm. The winners of the junior band battle are playing. And then at night time, it's going to be the people who've sort of either come through the sound check system or been involved with the Arts Council before. Finishing up on the Saturday night with an old band called the Clever Shirts, who I'm sure you know of, mm -hmm. Lee Harrison and people like that. And that's so that people can see where you start and where you are after 30 years of playing together. Okay. So, so remind us where it is exactly, this farm? It's at Rose Hill Farm, which is on Richmond Hill. All oh, right. And we've got a clear way and a 30 mile an hour limit, which is currently going through to make it a bit safer. Mm -hmm. There's no entry by foot. You have to come in a car, in a taxi, in your motor home, on the minibus. Uh, I don't want one person stood on Richmond Hill. Right. And the taxis are all instructed to come in. We've got a nice little one-way system where people can come in and be dropped off and then go back out. But no, I don't want anybody on that road. Good. Well, uh, like all these things, you get the first year under your belt, it'll mm. all come probably much more 
simplistic and thing, you know. Uh, hopefully, to, to yeah. Such things out, but, you know, well done on you to do this. Um, where's the best way to get your tickets and that sort of thing? Tickets are online mm-hmm. at www.thefullmoonfestival.co.uk. Um, if you want a group deal, because obviously I had a stag do approach me this week and there's quite a few of them, so I'm quite happy to do group deals and just look me up on Facebook and contact me through there. Um, it's Friday night, Saturday and Sunday. We finish early on the Sunday, about eight o'clock is the last band and then we have background music till 10 o'clock on the license so people can still drink and people can still stay the Sunday night because the three-day ticket that you buy is mainly for the concert should we say but the camping is is pretty much free of charge so anybody who wants to stay for the sunday can usually at a festival day three it's it's just the hardcore left isn't it <laughs> well let's hope you have good weather for it as well yeah well the good thing is that we've got this huge barn which can hold over a thousand people so if it rains or well the rain doesn't bother festival people but no. if it's really windy or we have to close anything down we can fit the whole festival inside everybody wow. so we don't have any fears of cancellation the or anything show will like that. go on the show will go on and we've sold enough tickets now to make sure it goes ahead um it's exciting you know we've got 150 people involved performance wise obviously some of them are in bands um, we've got the volume boys which are a young crew who are all djs they're going to run the forest area we've got christian clegg running the bass bus and ninja and then we've got Otty running the alternative music tent, which is going to have some blues and some jazz and some Manx folk. And we've got a little couple of secrets lined up as well. And then there's loads of kids entertainment. You know, we've got a wagon load of kids stuff. We've got workshops. Spin and Van and are going to be doing some workshops for the kids and the adults. And then in the mornings, we've got a football tournament. We've got yoga. We've got a fun run. So there's going to be plenty going on and lots of different foods. We've got every single food person that's there is a different culture of food. So we've got Thai, we've got, you know, you name Sounds it. Sounds fantastic. One yeah. more time with the information to get tickets. One more time, www.thefullmoonfestival.co.uk. 